Did you know that every bar of chocolate that you crave could be a sign of a serious mental health problem? Hi, I am Dr. Vishal. Welcome to my channel where we discuss the science of nutrition, weight loss and optimum lifestyle for all. So we all know that eating something sweet always makes us feel good, especially when we are stressed. When we are sleepy, we drink coffee. So clearly there is a close relationship between our digestive system and our brain. In today's video, we will explore the connection between our mind and our gut and what kind of food should we eat for optimum brain health. Also, I have a surprise planned for you in this video, so keep watching till the end. Our brain is like the control center of our body. It is working 24 7 and it controls every aspect, every other organ of our body. Even our thoughts and actions are controlled by this one organ, which is just 2% of our body weight but consumes 20% of all the energy that we eat. And more premium is the quality of the food, the better your brain will perform structurally and functionally. The most important one for us for today's discussion is the microbiome or the bacteria that live inside our intestine. These bacteria are so interesting because they secrete many neurohormones, which are chemicals which connect your brain to the digestive system via chemical messengers called neurotransmitters. In a recent study, Australian scientists had examined brain scans of 12,000 individuals. And they observed that people who followed Mediterranean diet had healthier and younger looking brains compared to people who followed Western diet. So what is this Mediterranean diet? Mediterranean diet encourages you to consume more fruits, more vegetables, especially green leafy vegetables, more nuts and seeds like dry fruits, more healthy fats and limit or restrict the consumption of alcohol. In addition, refined sugar, added sugar and refined grains are completely restricted in this diet. After reading this study, I was wondering how can we get the same benefits in our Indian diet? Interestingly, I read a study which said that the incidence of Alzheimer's disease in India is far less compared to the Western world. And they give credit to our good old haldi or curcumin, which is the active ingredient of turmeric. So what are some common ingredients and food items found in our kitchens that can support brain health? Things that you should eat and things that you should avoid. Number one on the list is egg yolk the yellow part of the egg. It is rich in a chemical called choline, C-H-O-L-I-N-E, choline. Choline is a part of a bigger chemical compound called acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter, which means it is a chemical which carries signal from one brain cell to the other brain cell. If our diet has enough amount of choline, then our brain can function optimally. Two egg yolks in a day can supply up to 50% of your daily requirement of choline. If you're a vegetarian, other sources of choline are beans like soya bean or kidney beans, broccoli, cauliflower and red potatoes. There is a relationship between less chances of depression and suicidal tendencies and high consumption of fish and other seafood. Fish and seafood contains omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids, which has shown to decrease the severity of depression even in psychiatric patients. People who consume seafoods can get this naturally through food or else you can opt for taking fish oil supplements on a daily basis. If you are a vegetarian, then dry fruits and nuts can provide sufficient amount of omega-3 and 6 fatty acids. However, keep in mind that they are very dense in calories, so you should always be eating in limitation so as to not cross your daily calorie limits. Third is the active ingredient of turmeric called curcumin, which we had just discussed. Theoretically speaking, you should be getting enough curcumin from the turmeric that we eat. But in reality, turmeric contains only 3% of curcumin. So the best way to get curcumin is through curcumin supplements or turmeric capsules, which are easily available available in the market. Fourth in our list is whole grains. If you walk in a supermarket, you will find most of the things we consume today are made from refined grains. In refined grains, there is no fiber, there is no nutrition and there is only calories. 
but in whole grains we get a lot of minerals lot of nutrition not to mention the fiber which we get from whole grains helps in keeping our gut microbiome functioning optimally next is probiotics probiotics are the healthy gut bacteria that we were talking about in the beginning of this video they are the ones who actually secrete neurotransmitters like serotonin to maintain our gut microbiome in a healthy fashion we need to include probiotic food and supplements into our diet some common examples of probiotic food from the indian kitchen fermented milk products like yogurt curd cheese paneer fermented green or black tea with sugar which is also called as kombucha which has become quite popular these days food made from fermented grains like dosa or idli if you are somebody who doesn't consume milk or milk products or cannot tolerate milk products then you can opt for probiotic supplements which are easily available in pharmacies and online stores these probiotic food and supplements increase the amount of healthy bacteria present in our gut and they suppress the unhealthy bacteria from growth in our intestines these gut bacteria survive on the fiber that we consume through our diet next in our list of brain health food is high fiber food luckily most of us in india are vegetarians and high fiber food is not difficult to find but unfortunately we see that most people don't consume green leafy vegetables or any vegetables for that matter and whole fruits on a daily basis some common examples of easily available high fiber food would be green and leafy vegetables things like spinach or palak sweet potato potato cauliflower broccoli they are all rich in fiber Some examples of high fiber fruits would be commonly available things like apple, banana, mangoes, all the seasonal fruits that you can find. And the best part about consuming fruits and vegetables is that they are not very dense in calories. So you can have a lot of these fruits and foods and still stay under your calorie limit mediterranean diet that we were just discussing is known for its use of olive oil but in india we rarely use olive oil so a good replacement for olive oil would be ghee but let me warn you that it is a very calorie dense food ingredient so it should only be consumed in moderation honorable mention goes to coffee and hydration coffee when consumed less than 400 mg per day which is less than 1 liter of black coffee helps you in maintaining focus for a long time chances of getting a thought block or brain fog is much less in a well hydrated body so along with all the food ingredients maintaining hydration or simply drinking water at regular intervals throughout the day can help your brain to function optimally now let's talk about things that we should avoid eating which can actually harm our brain and mental health western diet which is known for its use of refined sugar refined grains saturated fat combination of sugar salt and saturated fat commonly found in fast food is known to increase the severity of depression and associated symptoms so if i had to apply this in my daily life i would start my day with a breakfast of a full two egg omelet including the yolk some coffee and my fish oil supplements my lunch would include whole grains in the form of roti or chapati and lots of green leafy vegetables for example palak or cauliflower or broccoli and one whole fruit like an apple or banana and the dinner would include a uh, fermented probiotic food like buttermilk or paneer or curd along with some freshly cut vegetables in the form of a salad if you have watched the video so far then there's a surprise for you in the description box you will find a link and if you subscribe to the newsletter you can get a free diet plan made according to all the advice that i have given you so far so i hope you enjoyed understanding about various food that we can eat to keep our brain healthy if you would like to know more about gut brain axis neuroscience of cravings and other such similar topics then drop your queries in the comment section down below thank you for watching this video and i will see you very soon in the next one